this segment, we're going to disassemble and discuss the bearing frame. In order to do that, we must first remove the belt guard, we must remove the SAE housing, and we must remove the engine drive coupling. In removing the drive coupler, you must first remove the two set screws. Take one of the set screws and screw it into the threaded hole here. This is a wedge style coupler. So as you are screwing in the set screw, you're actually pressing the rubber drive coupling off of the swedge coupler. Once that is apart, the swedge portion actually slides off the shaft. Once you have the coupling off, then you can remove the key from the wedge coupling. Notice that this key is a special key. This key has been machined. At Pioneer, we refer this key to a Jerry key. The Jerry key allows, does not allow, excuse me, does not allow for the coupling to move after it is secured to the shaft. With the diaphragm pump and the diaphragm belt removed, it is now time to remove the diaphragm drive pulley from the shaft. First, like the other pulley, we must take a measurement from the face of the pulley to the end of the shaft, record that measurement so that we know where to put the pulley when we go to back to put it together. First thing you want to do is you want to come in and you want to remove the set screw above the keyway and then you want to rotate it a little bit and you want to remove the set screw just below the prior set screw. Next, you want to grab a little bit bigger Allen wrench. You want to come in and you want to remove the quarter inch bolt that holds the two wedge pieces that makes up the key. Remove that bolt. You then want to take a 3 8 threaded bolt you want to screw it into the threads. What this will do is this will drive the two wedge pieces apart. Once they are wedged once you have screwed the 3 8 bolt in, the two wedge, the one of the wedge pieces will be easily removed. Then you should be able to slide the pulley right off the shaft. And then you are able to get the other piece of your keyway, the two wedged piece keyway pieces back out. Now it is time to drain the oil from the bearing frame. You want to pull the plug at the bottom of the bearing frame. We are using a ISO 32 grade turbine oil to lubricate the bearings. Okay, now it's time to remove the SAE bracket. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to remove these eight bolts. We are still working from the SE side of the bearing frame. We, at this point, with the aid of a dead blow hammer, we are ready to remove the shaft from the bearing frame. Once you have your shaft and bearings out on the table, it is time to do an inspection on your bearings. Check your bearings for looseness and any abnormal wear. You will notice on the drive side of the pump, from the SAE bracket side, you will have a, a nut and a locking ring with tabs that are bent over to lock the ring in place. This is what secures the bearing to the shaft on the drive side. Now, if we rotate the shaft around and we look at the pump into the shaft, you can see we have another bearing on this shaft and this bearing is pressed on and is held in place after it is set into the housing so it does not need a snap ring or a locking nut. 
Now with the pump shaft removed, <clears throat> we are on the pump side of the bearing frame. One of the important things I think we need to talk about is the labyrinth seal. We use a labyrinth seal to seal the oil inside the bearing housing and it also prevents any pumpage if your mechanical seal fails from getting inside the bearing frame. Now, a couple of important things that we need to talk about on the labyrinth seal is when it is installed, it has a weep hole. The weep hole right here needs to be at the six o'clock position. If you're replacing this labyrinth seal, when the shaft is installed, you can see at the 12 o'clock position, there is another mark so that when you hold it in to press it in, you can look at that mark and be assured that the weep hole is at the bottom at the six o'clock position. <clears throat> with this, with this uh, labyrinth seal, one of the critical things to keep in mind is, is this is designed to leak at a seven degree angle so that the, it is important to keep the bearing frame as level as possible at all times.